Hi and welcome to the channel. Now hopefully this is the final time I'll be doing this video because oh, I've done it about 10 times. Okay, what I'm going to do today, we'll return to iFi. Um, I had to get a couple of little videos off my chest kind of thing to help some other people out. Um, very few views on it because it's just helping one or two people out. But I didn't mind doing them because it didn't take me very long to plonk them up there anyway. But we're back to the old iFi. And today just going to be changing the output capacitors, just the output capacitors of this Sansui 331. There it is on the screen, the output. There are the two capacitors with the arrows pointing to them. I'm going to be changing. I've already done a recap of this amplifier and I'm pretty pleased the way it's turned out. Uh, even though I've kept in the original uh, coupling capacitors, the actual uh, coupling capacitors there, the signal path capacitors, should I say as well, um, I've kept them in, the signal path, the coupling between each stage. I've kept them in now. But I've changed every other capacitor apart from these outputs and the main power supply one. And um, also, I'm, I'm tinkering around with the Sansui 217. We'll come back to it. Uh, got all, I haven't ordered any capacitors yet, but I will do. But as you probably see, I've got paint all over me. I've been doing a lot of decorations around the house, and it's a lot more work to do. Uh, got to get it ready for the builders to come in. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a while yet, uh, but I will get around to doing some more i5 videos. But we're talking that properly video. I'm probably talking about a month to six weeks away because it does take a lot of time. This is took a reasonable amount of time because I've got to let these run in kind of thing. But so when you're changing six, lucky enough, I'm only changing two. I've only got two to choose from today. Uh, not a big variety. Wish I'd have bought one more, but we'll come to that in a minute. Um, yeah, so uh, I've done a full recap on this, like I say, uh, apart from a few, as I just mentioned. That video's at the top. Explain it more in detail up there. And I'm pleased with the sound. I've, 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 I've probably, I think the headline is it's a musical feast, which is it's pretty good before I got it done on that anyway. You know, when I got it, it was pretty good anyway. Uh, but that just kind of added to it. It's added a little bit more of a percentage to the overall sound. Just made things a little bit sharper, a little bit clearer, a little bit tighter. It's added to it. It's definitely a difference between the two. Not a vile, we'll call it a vast amount, not chalk and cheese or anything like that. But it's a difference. You know, it's, it's, it's some differences there that are pleasing. It's a pleasing difference that you're going to be happy with. So I'm happy with that. Uh, but what I would say before I start with any more of this uh, change of these capacities, if you if you've got one, the state I've got this in, it's a good sounding unit anyway so you know you may be thinking twice is it worth me doing this especially if you're a bit apprehensive and you may think you'll muck it up i'd say be happy with what you got and it is good still it's still good you're not missing out on a great deal let's put it that way you're not missing out on a great deal and another thing i would say is it worth me taking this to a shop it depends on what they're going to charge if they're going to charge you 100 pounds you may be thinking 100 pound just to get that little bit more of a difference is worth it to me but then again you are going with what they're going to put in there where really this is a little bit more what the video is about as well what's actually getting put in there now because i've changed some capacitors in that 217 uh and i've gone along with them fine gold and i dismissed them wimmer capacitors doesn't mean i'm not backtracking i'm not getting out of anything like that it doesn't mean it's not right for your amplifier that wimmer it's just right for my amplifier the fine golds but your amplifier I'm not saying your amplifier being another one of these if, if you've got one of these then yeah I'd, I'd recommend the fine gold that's the one to get i think you know what i mean that's the one to get but if you've got another amplifier a pioneer or something like that it may not be the one to get it may not fit in it may not balance in that circuit so that's what i'm saying you know I'm not saying which one i'm not trying to tell you which one to go and get and recommending any ones really apart if you've got this particular unit is that i'm saying go and get a variety don't get one go and get three two or three so you've got a little bit of variety to choose from so you can kind of like put one in listen to that think oh, that sounds pretty good and this one here oh it sounds a little bit better i'll go with that one and vice versa so you've got a little bit of a variety because i'm not saying them women are no good they weren't in this case they just they just altered that tone too much for me just made it too mid-rangey and not a likable tone for me in this particular unit but in your unit, they could come up trumps. It could be the other way round. As I say, it's about buying a variety, really, uh, rather than me recommending any. But I'm not backtracking. I recommend the fine gold. Um, is it in this unit? No, I kept I kept the original. It was in the Sansui. When it was in the Sansui 217, I recommend the fine gold. And it didn't, it didn't work with this with it. It was okay. It was, it was pretty close. But I, I kept the original in it. I kept the original in it. So it's, it's, each amplifier is going to be different. Right, okay. I've waffled enough already. We're 20 minutes into the video, but you haven't put one of these in there yet. Right, we're going to do that now. We're going to rectify that. One more thing. We ain't putting it in yet. No, I've teased I'm not putting it in yet. One more thing I was thinking about doing all this is that um, you could get carried away. You can only get so much out of it. It's only a basic, towards the bottom of the range receiver. 
You're only going to get so, you're not going to suddenly make this sound like a 2,000 pound amplifier. You can only go so far. And I think if you go too far, you're trying to, you know, you, if you do it in stages as, as it goes down the uh, amplifier, you're putting a new cap here, a new cap there, and this is going to make it sound better. Because these old caps, like, they don't sound so good as they did nowadays because these new ones are made much better. They've got so much more detail, resolution, you name it, they all do it kind of thing. Back then, this would have sounded good back then. You know, it still would have sounded good. So replacing all these doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a more fantastic sound. You could kind of be counterbalancing things. You could be like doing things wrong kind of thing because you're replacing these. And when they made these circuits, they would have built around the items they've got then. They would have built that rest of the circuit supporting this back then to kind of like make this sound good. The one they had in there originally, you're taking that out and you're putting a new one in. It may not just be this that these replacing. You may have to tinker around with lots of bits around that circuit, changing a few resistor values, all that kind of stuff, uh, changing the normal capacitors, all that kind of stuff. It, it may be a bit counterproductive. That's what I'm saying. Just be a bit careful. You can kind of get carried away. I've got to get this. I've got to get that. This is a better sounding one. I'm going to pay a tenner for one capacitor. This is going to sound better than this. It may not always be the case. You you, you may be getting like to a stage where you're just giving that amplifier that transistor may be a bloke carrying something he may not be able to carry it. it's giving him too much to carry kind of thing so uh, you know just be a bit careful you could get carried away maybe i think we can only get so much out of it we can only go so far and we're just going to have a little bit of a tinkle really just to see which works best maybe okay I'm finally going to put one in there right so i took these out these are the elna uh, 2200 microfarads I think I stuck a picture up on the screen if I haven't there it is again 35 volts the original and I've stuck in the same make is it the same make I don't know 50 years ago this is probably a different company now but still got the same branding in NA and I stuck a 50 volt version in because uh, the 35 one looked a bit pony I thought I'll make it look a little bit bigger so I went for 50 volts don't know why I just did and uh, did that bring anything to the party you know did that increase anything well i think it gives a little bit more clarity just a little bit more clarity a little bit more definite yeah a little bit more clarity a little bit more definite just seem to give a little bit more um yeah defined it wouldn't, it wouldn't give any more space or anything like that. It just made things just a little bit more defined it, it did extend the top end just a tad the top end um and a little bit more detail now whether that detail is because i'm hearing more top end it could be a bit of that really but um it definitely increased the top end, but just a smidgen, just a little bit, but it wasn't increasing the top end. Uh, and one more thing I noticed, it just extended the sound stage between the two speakers, just went a little bit further past the speakers than it did previously, uh, using the original ones. But other than that, that was it. But uh, there was a difference there, and it was a it was a nicer difference. It was just like some, just getting a little bit finer detail, just a finer, just, just a little bit finer detail, and uh, a little bit more on the top end and a little bit more space. So that's what I'm getting out of that Eleanor. So I quite like that. That, that, that was worth putting in uh, for what it's cost, about two or three pound each. It's worth putting that in there. Uh, it's improved this by a little bit. You know, it's just a little bit more of an improvement there. So, OK, I've gone with this Nippon. Now, someone recommended these. these I, I, I thought these were more for, you know, reading about it and that was more for power supplies. And I wish I would have got a fine gold really now as well. Uh, I didn't. Uh, because I was, I was kind of like pushed into, not pushed into it, but I kind of like went with this thinking, well, I won't need to get another one. I'll, I'll just get the original one that was in the original my ENNA, and I'll get this nip on which I was recommended, and that'll be it. You know, case, you know, case closed kind of thing. Um, uh, and it, 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 you know, it made it clearer. It made a little bit more clarity to it. it. Didn't do nothing else. Top end wasn't increased, anything like that. It didn't increase the top end by a smidgen like the other one did. It didn't do that at all, uh, and it didn't increase the sound stage at all. Uh, across the speakers it didn't increase that at all so it just made it a little bit clear so again it's still worth putting that in if i didn't have them ENAs that i've got in there now i would have stuck this in i would have kept this and i would have got shot off the original because i'm getting a little bit more out of it like i say if i'd have got the fine gold i might have got a little bit more i don't know uh so that's what i'm saying you know it's best to experiment really so uh, and it's no good me saying that that fine gold is fantastic here if i did get it it makes it so much better because in your one it may not but if you've got the same unit as this here the free free one i'd recommend that little lnr it just gives a little bit extra you know to it it just made it sound just that little bit extra so i definitely recommend that for this particular unit anyway uh, so that's it and like i say it's not a fast amount of difference but there is just a, you know it is, it is noticeable just a little bit of a difference there that uh, I was happy with. So that's it. Um, yeah, I will change the power supply capacitor at some stage in here as well. Uh, and lucky enough, uh, I did have this 441. Uh, and when I kind of done a comparison between the two, I just favored the 331 
as original units they were. And like I said, I've got this box here. So I had kind of, I wish I had another 331, but I didn't. But I've got kind of 441 as a kind of like guideline. And it give me a guideline what the difference is between the two. I'm using my switcher box here. It's, uh, it's quite handy, this switcher box. And I actually connected the outputs of both of these to one set of speakers. Now, you've got to be careful. I just we will say this. I haven't mentioned it yet. Uh, hopefully, you've stuck around. If you are doing this, be very, very careful on the outputs, changing these capacitor coupled amplifiers. Especially in these two units here, is because we've got that on a chip. They call it STK unit made by Sanio. Uh, STK014 and 16, I think they are. This is a stereo unit in here. I think these are two mono units in here. Uh, if you blow one of them up, which you can quite easily do by putting this capacitor in the wrong way round, so be very careful if you are doing it, putting that capacitor in the right way round. Make sure you mark the board and you take a few pictures, you know exactly how it goes in. Especially with me, I was in and out, in and out like a yo-yo replacing these. Um, yeah, if you blow it up, you're going, to be in, uh, you're going to be in a bit of trouble because you can't get hold of them units anymore. You can get a fake unit off of um, eBay or something like that. You may be lucky enough to get a second air one. If not, you'll be buying one of these to take the unit out of one of these. So be careful if you do do that. So something worth you know bearing in mind kind of thing. Um, yes, yeah, so I was switching these backwards and forwards and uh, making sure I ain't got both on at once, both outputs going to the speakers at once and blowing them. So it's a bit, uh, we'll make sure I definitely got it right. Because I've done that before a few times and lucky enough I haven't blown any other amplifier, but I weren't too worried to a certain extent, is that obviously I could replace the output uh, transistors or something like that and in there, but here it's got to be extra, extra careful. Uh, so yeah, that kind of gave me an idea between the two, uh, how they used to sound, all that kind of stuff, and now they compare now, and I still obviously prefer the 331, it just sounds a little bit better now. Uh, how much better is hard to say, hard to put a percentage on there, but there is a noticeable difference. And also, one other thing I forgot to mention is that uh, you probably, if you follow the channel and you listen to all the rubbish I come out with, uh, you probably um, noticed that before, or well, not noticed, I mentioned before that this kind of volume knob was kind of like getting caught at a certain stage. It was kind of making, it was not making contact, it kind of it was disappearing and coming back where the wiper blade wasn't touching the, uh, the track. And I, I used, God knows how much spray and uh, bits and pieces, and I actually got hold of some of this uh, detox. Uh, little tube, I think it's green or, or greeny blue kind of colour, kind of squeeze that in and, and nothing. And I was, you know, really trying anyway. Uh, I think it's done the trick because uh, I've got no problem with it at all now. I kind of give up on it. I was actually going to do a video of me replacing this, uh, trying to get hold of a pot. It's not easy to get hold of these volume pots uh, and maybe making something up as well because he's got four prongs rather than the three. But lucky enough, uh, over a period of time, it's finally done it. You know what I mean? I've put so much spray in here, it's, it's just swimming in stuff. But uh, I don't know if that like that little tube actually done it in the end. It, it was thicker, let's put it that way. Whether it's done it or not, but finally, finally, after all that time, just shows you, you know what I mean? If you just wait sometimes, you take things out. I could quite easily replace that and uh, not needed to now because it's working absolutely fine. So I'm pleased with that as well. So, all, you know, everything's come out really well for this amplifier, really. I'm, I'm really pleased. So that's it. Um, yeah. They're worth changing. You're going to get a little bit more extra out of it. Uh, maybe not, you know, you're going to get a bit more clarity. Uh, but these read quite well. I was quite, you know, surprised. And actually, just quickly put a picture up. I did mention just a picture of this one, what it read, and the one I've got in there as well. So you can do a little... Did I do that one as well? Yeah, I think I did. Did I? Oh, you said... No, I didn't. I didn't take a picture of it. Sorry. The one's in there. I haven't got a picture of Sorry, I just realised. I've only got two. Forgot to do it. And I couldn't be bothered taking it out. But they, it, it read pretty much the same. That you know, the V loss was about 0.5, I think, and the capacitance was uh, near enough dead on. So um, yeah, sorry about that. I haven't got that picture, but you've got this one and the original. But more importantly, I think it's the original. You can see the reading now. It's pretty good. Okay, that's it. Uh, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.